Hello, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the CombatSystem.com, CatchJitsu.com. Today I'm going to be talking about handgun wounding potential, uh, the ballistics of various carry calibers, 9mm and up specifically, 9, 40, 45, and 10mm. And going to be giving you the data, the best data that's really out there and where it's all at. People just repeat hearsay. They repeat caliber over bullet performance. Um, and, and no, way more important than caliber is what particular ammunition is picked, where it needs to really be one of the top five ammos in that particular caliber. And then you can make a relative comparison based on that if given same or similar barrel lengths. Everything matters by barrel length um, when talking about ballistics. And um, as you can see here, guys, in this picture, everything is fairly similar, but contrary to current popular belief, not exactly identical. And uh, I'm going to get into that. And then you can make better informed de decisions. I'm going to show you some of the places where you can find the information. But look at these different calibers at different weights, at different velocities and the measly penetration there in actual ballistics gelatin. And we'll talk about clear ballistics versus actual ballistics gelatin and the difference and if it's proper FBI protocol, ex proper temperature, etc. and so forth. So it just gives you an idea. Um, in pistol ballistics, temporary wound cavities, the stretching really isn't uh, that important. Temporary wound cavities really aren't important. They All the best people, ballistics people, doctors say doesn't matter under 2,000 feet per second and most people really think it's more like 2,600 feet per second. So on your typical like AR platform um, you can't really uh, chop the barrel too much until you see a big reduction in velocity and therefore effectiveness with most particular rounds being the combination of the projectile, the bullet, and the velocity at which it is fired. So I'm not going to deal with rifle ballistics. That's much uh, more difficult subject. You should probably understand pistol first uh, before getting into uh, yaw and tumbling and things of that nature. Um, to make things just easy for you, you can always go to my website. I need some updating so I can add more info. More info has recently become available. My website, thecombatsystem.com slash CWP. Uh, I might change in the future um, to a different name for a concealed weapon permit, depending on what state I happen to be in. Uh, but you can go to the combat system, look at all my martial arts stuff, my self-defense stuff, my jiu-jitsu stuff, catch wrestling stuff, etc., and find the basically the hidden weapons page, uh, firearms page, all about self-defense. And um, you see here I put some of my best choices again at barrel length does matter in various calibers 9 40 45 and right there you can see how pretty similar but not identical that they are not identical in penetration not identical in expansion not identical in foot pounds of energy maybe more important in the real world is actually momentum to pierce ribs sternums shoot through arms etc uh, but muzzle energy, velocity, these things um, are factors. So, uh, guys, I compiled a lot of information there. Various calibers, 38, 357 from 2-inch barrels. Um, it just, it's just a good place where it's compiled. It's not compiled everywhere that easy. Lucky Gunner's done a good job. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, but I've compiled a lot of information for you as a good reference source on my website, thecombatsystem.com. Now... Uh, some of the information I'll be going over as the best sources, guys, are always going to be the FBI. What they've actually issued, no one pays attention to. What they've actually issued and stated over the years. NYPD data is of utmost importance because it's such a large department, and they've recently published a, a big study, and they use... Uh, Glocks with uh, 124 grain plus P gold dots. They have a lot of data. Primarily, that's what they use. Um, hand in, handgun wounding factors by Yuri Patrick, who did a lot of the consulting with the FBI. Um, a look, an alternate look at handgun stopping power by Greg Elifritz. Some hearsay reports you can find over the years from Masai de Ayob. 
maybe I pronounced that wrong, on department's effectiveness, what he's heard from different departments when they change calibers or they change to a lighter grain bullet, etc. Various calibers. Very important quote from Dr. Martin Fer Fer uh, Fackler on 45 and about uh, things are not about caliber as simple as you think. Well, 45 is only 0.5 bigger than 40, but it's about radius squared. Radius squared damage tissue, he says, are 45 to 60 percent more damage than the 9 millimeter. Now, we don't know if that was really referring to moderate hollow points or not, or simply to ball. Obviously, ball is going to be more effective. Um, modern hollow points, well, that depends on how effective they are through whatever meeting they happen to hit. Specifically, bone, 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 which we'll talk a lot about. Here is an alternate look at handgun stopping power. This is a good place to kind of start and get an idea. Now, no, don't just look at average number of rounds of total incapacitation. Read the whole thing, but, but also look at... Um, the, the percentage of, of one-shot stops and the, and the percentage, more importantly, the percentage of people who are not incapacitated. What you'll find is under 38, 30, 380 level, the not incapacitated level, the people that just get pissed off and charge through everything, um, if they're a determined attacker, especially have mental issues, drugged out, drunk, etc., goes way, 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 way up when you're not talking service calibers. So everyone in the know really says try to keep to 380 and above, 380, 38 special, or then real calibers being 9, 40, 45, 357 SIG. Potentially a step up from that, in my opinion, is 10 millimeter and 41 Magnum, a little step up with always we're talking about the very best ammo choices um, for that particular barrel length. So you cannot make blanket statements and you cannot, um, well, 357 Magnum is way more powerful than a 9mm. Actually, in a 2 inch barreled revolver compared to um, a 3.5 inch 9mm, they're about the same. Of course, a 2 inch uh, revolvers have chamber length free bore and actually more velocity because of the actual distance. Um, but anyway guys, good place to start is Lucky Gunner. Lucky Gunner is the original spot compared a lot, but you need to look both at Lucky Gunner, ammo to go and any um, tests you see online, again, what platform, what barrel length were they using? Can even change if it's a polygonal or polygonal if it really likes to get it on barrel. Um, can raise velocity by 35 feet per second typically. So, um, you know, you have to take and consider all these factors. Uh, you know, if you can find out temperature, where they're located, some people are doing gel tests, but they're in a very cold spot. Other place, I'll mention that later, he's in Arizona, I think his, his clear gel uh, uh, heats up and doesn't get some under penetration because of that. So, that's just a theory. But anyway, Lucky Gunner's great because they originally broke down 940-45, then they did 38 and 357 Magnum, and now they've also added 10 millimeter recently, which most people don't aren't aware of, um, but that's great. So, I'll start getting into some specifics as we go along. What do I think are the best in certain calibers? In 9 millimeter, if it's under 3 and a half, in under 3 and a half inch barrel, and you're not law enforcement where you need bonded, 124 grain regular pressure HST does great. If it's three and a half inch barrel or over, my choices in order would be Golden Saber Black Belt, that's the bonded plus P, 124 grain plus P, whether you pick Golden Saber, Golden Saber Black Belt, bonded, um, HST, or Gold Dot. Gold Dot, a little less penetration usually, uh, but because of window glass and stuff, if you're law enforcement or maybe if you're a trucker, if you're worried about windshield uh, penetration, gold dots are good. So things like that are also factors to consider. But if you 124 plus P gold, golden saber black belt. Now what you're looking for is ammo that gives your hopefully quickest incapacitation time to stop their deadly actions against you or others. That's what defensive gun use self-defense is. Now, 
we have to talk about the factors. The factors are most important, most important, number one is penetration. Penetration trumps all else. If it doesn't get deep enough to the central nervous system, uh, getting deep into the brain, the spine, uh, the organs, major organs, heart, lungs, less important, less uh, longer incapacitation times, usually spleen, liver, penetration is king. Expansion is queen because the diameter while it's going through is how much tissue gets pushed out of the way slash destroyed and helps create blood loss which is the other way people usually get stopped or decide to sit down and take a little feel tired. Above and beyond that, if you can get those, penetration be way more important, expansion being the other factor has to be in balance. If you can get those, I personally always think muzzle energy, velocity, the, the more the merrier. And I, when you go to people that have hunted their whole lives and shot various animals, deer, especially deer size and up, wild boar, etc., that becomes, um, you know, they go, well, yeah, it seems to be more effective. When we compare it to rounds that we always knew were effective, 357 Magnum, 125 grain jacketed soft point hollow point from a 4-inch barrel. We also know 9 BP uh, LE, that was a plus P plus 115 grain. Federal round did really well in law enforcement circles for a very long time before higher tech bullets came out. So velocity to some extent does matter, though heavy and slow momentum, according to coroner's reports, to MEs, medical examiners, to morticians, to see consistent penetration through the breastbone, through the ribs that don't stop just before the heart, that actually get to the heart and penetrate then, oh, then you start to go, oh, maybe heavy bullets, momentum is more important. And going through bones is not something you see in most gel tests. And that is a very good reason, though there is um, some people that do put bones in their tests, and that's important if they try to keep the variables at a minimum, where it's a rib they just bought at the store versus one that sat out and dried out in the refrigerator on the counter forever. Of course, bone density and all these variables get put into play. Um, Number one source to start, guys, is going to be Lucky Gunner. Then Ammunition to Go has recently um, has recently put out stuff in the four major calibers, or well, 940, 45, and 380. So Ammunition to Go has recently put out a lot of data. Now some some of their pistols were different barrel lengths. That is very important to consider. Now I have to get to the point that these two best sources for your early reference material are in clear ballistics. And now on all the data I can see and what I can extrapolate, clear ballistics is a pretty good job of giving you reference, but it is not ballistics ordinance gelatin at proper FBI protocol. The biggest variance seems to be, in my opinion, in nine millimeter or higher velocity rounds. It shows deeper penetration in clear ballistics as a general rule in all calibers than it does in ballistics gelatin. So that's very, very important. You're gonna always want on the higher, deeper end of penetration, unless it's particularly for home defense and there's people in other rooms you have to worry about. You're going over penetration for the most part is a myth. Under penetration is by far most important. For a large extent, if we're talking hollow points, over penetration is a myth, or mostly a myth. Um, so, you know, this is a hard topic to cover if someone's new about it, but these are the sources, and then I'll get into comparing sources and the difficult rounds. Some other reviewers are going to want to look at, once you get familiar with Lucky Gunner and Ammo to Go results, don't just go by that. Realize the deeper is needed because that, especially, especially because that is clear gel, not proper ballistics gel, and especially in the higher velocity rounds. I don't see the big variance in all the comparisons I've done in uh, lower velocity rounds or even 12 gauge and lighter stuff. But when you go to 9 millimeter, maybe 357 sig, but at least in 9 millimeter, it seems like the variance can be 3 4 inches. Um, same thing with 556. Five, so uh, very important to kind of keep that in mind when you're making a decision on what to carry. Most important over caliber though is always picking one of the very best rounds. Try to get one of the top five rounds based on penetration. Most important, most, most, most important. 
expansion, and then energy, velocity, etc. If you can, all else being equal, if all else is equal. Um, guys, on YouTube, you're going to want to check out Lucky Gunner Ammo to Go, Tennessee Outdoors, TN Outdoors. He used to use an old sim, then I think now he, then he switched to clear ballistics, shooting the bull 410, clear ballistics, shorter barreled guns, 3 inch barrel, 9mm, um, Judge Governor stuff, mostly ju like Judge 410 stuff, and um, really 380 stuff, but so 2.8 inch barrel 380 stuff and 3 inch barrel 9mm stuff. If that's what you're carrying, you're going to want to check out shooting the bull 410. Scuba Oz, I think, was even more um, trying to get things done correct to standards with real ballistics gel. I hope that he was following temperatures and how long he, he got it out in the sun and stuff like that. But it seems that he was. You can draw good reference, I believe, from Scuba Oz. And his real ballistic stuff is more important than clear ballistic stuff. Whenever you look at clear ballistic stuff, again... From my uh, my hunch, especially in 9mm and higher velocity rounds, you have to take a little bit to quite a bit of penetration away. So all these people that go, well, my, uh, my, uh, my short barreled uh, 38 goes 13 inches, well, in, in clear gel, that doesn't mean, it doesn't mean anything in real ballistic gel to me. And that does, definitely means even less in clear ballistics. So... Uh, guys, Kentucky Ballistics, especially if you're in Underwood ammo, he com compares Underwood to Underwood in various calibers in actual ballistics gelatin. Um, so, especially if you're in a ton millimeter or considering it, guys, Kentucky Ballistics 7 and 6, TFB TV, especially for 10 millimeter stuff, but other stuff as well, where you want to go. 7 and, and 6 does wood bone, he, call, he puts a wood in front of water jugs, but he knows, okay, four jugs does this, compared in, in ballistics delta, and five jugs of penetration does this, three, uh, he, he's very, very consistent, and it seems to correlate very well in a cheap testing medium to uh, ballistics delta. So, um, TFB, I would say that I do have a theory that he's in Arizona, and a lot of his rounds seem to underpenetrate compared to other gel testers out there, and I think that's because the blocks heat up in the direct sunlight in the Arizona in the afternoon. Now, Paul Harrell, he's a guy who knows a lot. He's been in at least, I believe, three defensive gun uses, probably two as a civilian, perhaps one as a, in the military. Um, he does these meat target tests. Now, that has variables, and that's not nearly as good as only looking at ballistics gelatin. But, ballistics gelatin does not tell you the whole story because we're not going through bone. Now, if you're usually going to shoot for the upper thoracic cavity, again, guys, heavier bullets, more momentum may go deeper. Not all the time, but may. And if you compare with the ballistics gelatin people and also Paul Harrell's video, you'll see a bit of damage. Now, with his uh, targets in more recent years, doing like leather, he did, puts leather or t shirts or four layer de denim, depending, some kind of clothing, sometimes over leather or pig skin, like a leather jacket or actual like pig ear tissue or something like that, to simulate uh, actual tissue. Then um, going through pork ribs, which is good, and then going through. Sorry if the video is getting a little boring. Um, then going through watermelon, then pork ribs, then the back layer of clothing, and then how far in a fleece backing. That's good because you're getting um, some idea of comparison between different rounds. However, some of his cheaper. Uh, big box store, green and white box stuff, I don't think really does as well as he tends to make it believe. I think his stuff, like in 380, if it's going through both sides of the bones and in the back clothing, in real world, a lot of hollow points are not going to penetrate that far in a human body. Now, 9mm, on the other hand, and a lot of other bigger rounds, yes, you will find a lot on the back side of a body, right in the back ribs, and stuck in the back um, skin, which is very elastic, guys. And even in the BB testing, you need to realize that I think I think FBI protocol is like 3.38 inches just for a BB gun to calibrate it properly. So um, skin is very, very tough and elastic. Um, something to know about as well when you're looking at ballistics gelatin tests. So 
let's look at some particular rounds and I know this is getting a little long but 9 millimeter I've gone over what I think are the best and here's the 45 test comparisons on ammo to go I really think this 165 grain HST and 40 caliber is better than anything you could find in 9mm. Now in general, I think 9mm is good enough for most people, but if you're comparing best to best and taking out considerations like weapon tear and mostly it's actually about politically about uh, people aren't as hard mentally as they used to be, they're physically as not in shape as they used to be, um, and a lot more female hires as well that are on average, uh, you know, uh, smaller statured or less muscular in the upper body uh, with recoil management and stuff. You take if you take that out and split times, which can be managed with a better shooter. Take all that out and just compare ballistically. This 40 does better than um, any nine millimeter round, from what I can tell, and probably even more so in the real world. That's just the way it goes because of momentum. Um, but that doesn't mean just all the 180s do better than the 124 grain plus P. 9 millimeters because it doesn't but in this caliber 165 seems to do really good here with medium now guys when you're looking at this stuff you need to actually look at the particular ammo before you buy it because you might look at the median but if you have one that penetrates 13 and one that penetrates 25 sorry I want everything in my opinion people just say well 12 to 18 as long as it's 12 inches is okay and then they don't even take well and then they it's clear ballistics 12 inches and clear ballistics is even less so actually it'd be a failure by fbi standards so in my opinion it needs to be 15.5 to even 21 especially in clear ballistics that's really not over penetration uh and over penetration is mostly a miss since even law enforcement only hits 20 percent of their shots only 1.6 in New York NYPD study, 1.6 out of 8 shots fired. Only 1.6 hits. That means that 7 are misses. For everyone that's a hit, 7 are misses. 80% are misses. Worry more about the 80% that miss your target that could hit a civilian behind them than the bullet that maybe has way less than 15 or 10% energy left and is blooping out of the skin that's very elastic and slows it down if the person happens to be very skinny, worry way more about the misses that are full energy than something that has probably less than 10% or 15% tops energy. Okay, so anyway, this HST 19.7, that's great. In my opinion, you want more than 15.5 inches. Uh, if, the deeper end and that, if you, no one ever, they cite the 12 to 18 standard, but they never look at what FBI's actually issued since Miami in 10 millimeter, in the original 10 millimeter loadings, then in 40, 9 millimeter, everything they've authorized, 38, etc. Everything's been like 15.5 to about 19 inches is what the FBI, and that's in real ballistics gelatin. Clear would be even deeper. So um, I say what I say based on actual, uh, you know, the best people doing it. Um, as well as what real world experience says. Penetration is king. So, is a 9 just as good as a 40? It's almost just as good as a 40 in 45. But is it identical? No, not necessarily. In the real world, does it matter? Yes, according to most people that have actually been in shootings and throughout time. Is that margin getting more narrow with better... Um, better ammo development with better bullets? Yes, of course. In 45, let's look at the Golden Saber 185 grain plus P. Now, the 220 plus P uh, critical duty does really well, but there's a big variance and not enough expansion. There's other rounds uh, like Ranger, Ranger T's uh, plus P, uh, 230 grain plus P, I believe. But again, if one goes 13.3 and one goes 25, I don't want it versus something that is 15.3, 16.5, 16.6. These are five different rounds. And look at the expansion that give me good, reliable um, all the way. Okay, so, um, and that's at 1,100 feet per second. Now, you got to look at barrel length as well. This is ammo to go, so this is from a 4.5 inch barrel, and you see better performance on the ammo to go in 45 than you do in Lucky Gunner, which was, uh, I think, 3.62 car. 
So in my opinion, 45, you want four and a quarter inch barrel or up if possible. 45, I think barrel length is more important than nine millimeter. Nine millimeter to get the best should be four inch or four and a half inch, maybe even five inch. Four inch is what more, most law enforcement uses. Three and a half seems to be fine. Under three and a half, well, then the plus Bs aren't as effective. The HST, you gotta be more particular if you're only carrying like a single stack smaller pistol. Look at now, let's look up at the step up in 10 millimeter. Well, nothing really can be this 10 millimeter 180 grain V crown or the new 200 grain gold dot. 19.4 19.7. Again, this is clear ballistics, so it's probably maybe 18 in FBI.